Hello, Virgos. I'm going to look into your situation. So it's whatever the cards want to say. It could be love, uh, old person, new person, could be money, could be career. It's just whatever wants to come out here. Love offer, fear of commitment, interesting. It's a very weird mixed energy, but okay. Truth and clarity. Mental instability. Okay. Someone wants to give you a love offer, but they're going to try to blame mental illness or mental instability like anxiety or depression on their behavior. Like they're going to try to say like, oh, I did these things because, you know, of this. And for some, it's true. Let's let's see what's going on. We'll see. We'll see. Because they have a fear of commitment. And for some, I mean, I don't want to say for all of them that it's just like fake, that it's just I'm not taking responsibility because some of them really are taking responsibility. Some of them do have some kind of mental illness and they want you to know that they're going to get help with it. Like because some of them, I feel like with some of them, like with their fear of commitment, it's like they... They might have like some kind of disorder where they, they sabotage things and they run. It's like they can't, it's like they have poor communication skills or like they don't know how to handle relationships. It's like that kind of, like that kind of thing. And full disclaimer, I am not a psychologist. I'm not licensed. I cannot diagnose anybody, you know, like I'm, I'm not qualified to do that. But I'm just getting, you know, because mental instability isn't always a disorder. It could also just be like just general you know, just not being mentally well, just being anxious, just being depressed, just being upset, being in their head about something. But they, they want to give you a love offer. I'm feeling like they also want to explain why they were so afraid of a commitment in the past. Yeah, they want reconciliation with you. So they want it. So they, they were afraid of commitment and they were very mentally unstable. And it's like they want to give you some kind of truth is what I'm getting. Like they want to have a conversation and they want to explain things to you. Like they want to tell you about why they it's like they want to open up to you and tell you like their family history some of them have like a family history of um okay trigger warning i'm going to mention some things here so please you know just I, I i gave you a trigger warning beforehand this is some serious stuff some of them have been raped um as children some of them have been abused as children some of them have been they were beaten by like an uncle or aunt or some kind of relative they were um some of them were just really abused as children is what I'm getting. Like they have like a very toxic family or they just felt like alone their whole life. And I'm getting that this person feels very safe with you and they want to open up to you about those things. Like maybe before they were worried how you would look at them or they would worry that it was too soon to tell you or that you just wouldn't understand. But I feel like this person's at that point where they kind of want to open up about their childhood and their history and things that they've been through with you. Because they want you to understand why they are the way they are and why they did certain things. And they don't want to do it anymore. They do want to get better. So there's some kind of truth coming out that's going to, you know, they're hoping to explain their fears of commitment to you. And they're hoping to kind of explain, like, their mental instability. Some of you might be finding out that they have a mental illness that you didn't know about. Like, maybe you got the sense that they were, like, borderline or bipolar or something of that nature. Um, or PTSD or just any number of things and like you never like they knew it like they had the diagnosis but they didn't want to tell you or they were afraid that you would get scared or that you would judge them that you know they were afraid of how you would look at them and I'm getting some of them want to be honest with you now and they want to tell you hey I have this disorder and I want to get help for it you know I don't want to run anymore It's like you're getting a love offer, but I'm getting like a very serious heart-to-heart -heart conversation coming in as well. Yeah, they want to put an end to stagnation and complacency. They don't want to be stagnant anymore. I'm getting that this person just really feels like they're not good enough for you and they're really afraid of rejection because I get like channeling... I, like, I primarily channel, especially, you know, those of you that have been here with me for a while, you know that I primarily channel, you know, so I pick up on the energies of this, of the groups that I, that I read, and I just get, like, pain, I get, like, a lot of pain and a lot of, like, like, they want to bear their soul to you, like, they just want to lay it out all on the table, like, they want to tell you some stuff, like, they want to, you ever have, like, those, those drunk conversations where, you know, like, you sit on the rooftop with someone until three in the morning just talking about life and, and 
just bearing your souls to each other. It's almost like like a higher vibrational conversation where it's like your souls just shine through. It's like you're like in this high perspective. Even if you're drunk, it's like you're still it's like a very emotional conversation. It's very high vibrational in my opinion because it's like you're just you're being authentic and raw and honest and just real. You know, you're just taking a leap of faith. You know, you guys ever had those conversations? You just sit on a rooftop until like 3 a.m. just talking about life and and love and your opinions. And it's like there's just no filters. It's just just completely raw and, and vulnerable and emotional and authentic. This person wants that conversation with you is what I'm feeling very strongly here. Like they want to tell you something and they're terrified that you're going to reject them when you find out. I mean, for some, this could be what their fear of commitment made them do. Like, they might be, you know, they might, for some of them, they might be kind of explaining things, like, to you. For others, I think for a lot of you, though, I'm feeling like, like, mental, some something mental, like, something, something about their mind is what I'm seeing. Something about their mind that they want to tell you about, like, like a diagnosis that they have or, like, a... Like a thought pattern. It's just like a secret, but it doesn't it doesn't feel like a secret that's going to hurt you. And I mean, you know, take it as it resonates because for a couple of you, it could be a secret that's going to hurt you. You know, I'm not saying that it's not for sure. But for the majority of you, I'd say for 80 to 90% of you, this secret is more about them. It's more about their history, their childhood, things that they've been through, why they, why they do the things that they do. Um, just wanting to open up to you and kind of explain some of their behavior to you and explain maybe at the time that they ghosted you, if they like, so let's say they ghosted you or they distanced themselves, maybe there was some stuff going on with them mentally, like they were in a really dark place um, or they were like drinking or doing drugs or doing something and like that's, they kind of shut everybody out. Like it wasn't just you. It was like they cut all their friends out. Like they were just like in like a dark room just by themselves, like completely isolated some of them, like I said, some of them have mental illness. So some of them, some of them go through these phases where they do isolate themselves for months, and then they come back around like nothing happened. But it's like when they come out of that phase of isolation, it's it's hard to pick those relationships back up because not everyone's gonna understand that. Like, like their friends and family that have known them for years and years and years, like yeah, they probably understand it. It probably frustrates and hurts them, but they probably still understand it. But like people that are, are more recent in their lives, like they might not understand that. They might just be like, why the hell did this person just leave when everything was perfect? You know? And it's like for some, cause I'm just getting for some of you, this is, it's like this person like just drops everybody out of their life for periods of time. And then they come back around and try to pick up the pieces. Like after they come out of this phase of depression or anxiety or, or, you know, social issues or whatever else it might be, they come out of the, this that, that energy and they try to pick up the pieces and they try to pick up where they left off. It's almost like they lose a sense of time to some degree too because they get so lost in their head. You know, some of them have like a lot of trauma. So it's like, it's like they come out of that energy and then they want to talk to you, but... You know, they're kind of afraid, like, what are you going to say? Because for some, it's been a while since they've talked to you or it's been, you know what I mean? Like, or for some, it's like they just don't know if you're going to handle that the way other people do. Like people that know them well can handle it, but it's like they don't know what, how you're going to take it. They don't know if you're going to understand or if you're going to reject them. It's like they're trying to, they're really trying to better their lives now. They're trying to get past this, this, whatever this mental disability or whatever is going on with them mentally. They're trying to get past that energy. So they're coming out of a phase, almost like a dark night of the soul, or just like maybe this is just a phase that they go through from time to time where they just kind of isolate and drop everyone out of their life. And then at some point, it's like they get out of that period of darkness and they start opening their heart back up again and they want to be social again. It's like they have like a renewed sense of energy, but then they look around and they're like, damn, I just isolated myself for three months. What am I going to do? Like, like, how do I pick up where I left off? You know, it's like, because a lot of people are mad at them. A lot of people are like, how dare you just drop me like that? Like, you know, you should have let me in. You should have let me help you with that. And some of them just felt like they just couldn't. Like, they didn't have the energy. Like, they just felt so isolated. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like some of them are thinking about that. Where it's like they they... It's like they're coming out of that phase of darkness. And now they want to pick the pieces back up and start their lives over again. 
but they need to they need to do something to fix this though because you can't go through this again with them you know what i mean like you they can't just like i understand why they have to do it i mean i understand that they're, they're going through a lot mentally and they feel in that energy in that moment you know i can understand i can empathize with that it's like they really feel like they just like like i mean some of you guys have been depressed you know how it can get it's like it can get to the point where you just feel like you cannot get out of bed you know and this person might have severe depression or some kind of severe disability um but at the same time it's like you also don't want to put yourself in a position where it's like they can just leave whenever they feel like it and then once they get out of that phase they can come back out of it but i am feeling like this person wants to take responsibility like they really do want to better their lives so i think some of them were not open to counseling and now they are open to counseling or some of them like are open to getting on medication now because the last phase was particularly bad and they lost quite a few people that were important to them because I'm getting that this person did not just ghost you. They ghosted a lot of people that they really loved. I feel like they might have like a brother figure for some that was like really important to them. And like that brother figure is is kind of moving on with his life because he's he's kind of tired of his friend just only being there when it suits him. Um, but I mean, have empathy for this person because I mean, they really are going through a lot. Like this doesn't seem like a bad person This to me. This seems like a genuine good person, but just someone that is a little bit lost and doesn't really know how to get out of this energy. So I think some of them are opening up to getting mental help for this. Like, I think some of them thought they could do it on their own. And then they went through like another episode that lasted a long time. And this time they really sabotaged a lot of their close relationships and they really went down a dark path. And now they're trying to come out of that, but they really do want to better their lives. You know, they're, they're, they're breaking, they're ending these patterns, these cycles, you know, break through freedom. They're ending this stagnant energy, this dark phase that they've been in. But you know, I feel like a lot of them, it's like they want to pick up the pieces with you, but it's been a while since you've talked and they just, they don't know what to say. They don't know if you're going to understand this, you know? So, so yeah, I feel like they're wanting to have that honest, vulnerable, emotional conversation with you. Um, and this is a really good person. I really feel like this is a very emotionally deep person, you know, like this is someone that's very, it's like they are genuine. They have a lot of emotion, a lot of passion. This might be like an artist or a musician or someone that's very creative, you know, because a lot of people like with like mental illness like that, a lot of people like that are really creative and artistic and passionate and driven. Like they, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of pros that come with that energy. Um, so, I mean, I do feel like this is, I don't feel like this is a bad person. I really do feel like this is a good person, but they do even though I can tap in and understand why they did these things, like why they distanced themselves, why they felt like they couldn't connect, why they just felt so alone, eight of swords kind of energy. Um, they still need to get some help for it though, because it's not fair to you for them to do that to you again. It's not fair for you to, to go through that again, because at some point they might, you know, it, it's like when they feel happy, they feel like they're on top of the world. Like they're trying to get back into their art projects and do this and this and this, but then, when that depression or whatever it is, you know, it, it's different for everybody, but when it hits and then they go right back to that old energy and they go back to that isolation. So it's like, you can't go through that again. But, but I think some of them, for a lot of them, I'm getting that they are open to getting, um, some psychological help finally. So that's good. That's a start. It's a really good start. But yeah, it's like, they want to tell you something, but like I said, it's, it's more like they just want to be very vulnerable and very honest and very emotional with you. Like, there's something that there's a secret about themselves that they want to reveal. So I'm not feeling like it's a secret. Like I said, for most of you, I don't think it's a secret like cheating or they did this or they did that. I'm not getting that kind of energy because I feel like a very gentle, very emotional, creative, loving energy from this person. Like, so I'm feeling like more like the secret is I'm just I get like vulnerability. When I think about this conversation, it just feels like this person wants to cry. They want to be held they want to hug you they want to be emotional with you like they want this heart-to-heart -heart conversation they want you to just bear your bear your souls to each other um they're just afraid that you're not going to accept them they're afraid that you're not going to like like i said some of them it's like they want to tell you about their childhood or their history their past or maybe they went through something dark that they want to tell you about or i feel like maybe there's like a mental illness diagnosis that they want to reveal to you and they were just afraid that you wouldn't you know, that you wouldn't understand it, that you would reject them, that you wouldn't want that in your life, in your life, something of that sort. So it's like they want to reveal something to you here. Um, but like I said, for most, it's just it's them being vulnerable. It's not really about their relationship so much. It's more about their past and their history and 
you know, there's something going on with their mind and, and mental mental issues and whatnot that they want to reveal to you. Like, they just want you to know them. I'm getting that song, Iris, by the Goo Goo Dolls. Um, I don't want the world to see me because I don't think that they'd understand when everything's made to be broken. I just want you to know who I am. Like, they just, they want you to know them. They want you to understand them. They want that connection. They want that depth and that intensity and that romance and passion and that connection. They want you to really understand. And they want to apologize to you. I feel like, yeah, there's just a fear of rejection. They just don't know if you're going to, if you're going to allow this in your life, though. They don't know how, they're scared that you're going to look at them differently. It reminds me of Lucifer. You guys ever see the show Lucifer where it's like, Lucifer was so scared of revealing his true face to to Chloe for like the first what three four seasons it's like he was so afraid of how she would look at him that he sabotaged it and did all this stupid shit because he didn't want her to see his true face you know he didn't want to reveal that to her yet like he was afraid to um betrayal jealousy conflict yeah I feel like he's gonna tell you I feel like this person male or female is gonna tell you about just some the trail they went through and they're going to tell you that you know what like I've some of them it could be an ex it could be an ex that really screwed them up that they want to tell you about and they want to be open with you about it like maybe they weren't over this ex when you guys were, were talking and maybe they fell back like maybe they were kind of I don't feel this person seems like a loyal type of person to me like because I get like a very innocent creative pure vibe from this person so I mean I can't say for sure but I don't feel like this person would be the cheater type but it's possible that like maybe this person was like had just gotten out of a relationship or like they were still like talking to someone, even if they weren't together, they were still having hope for someone else. And this person betrayed them and hurt them and like made them jealous. It's like, maybe there was like, cause this person seems very gentle. So maybe they had someone that was very toxic that was screwing with their mind and hurting them like a third party. And maybe they want to open up to you about that. Like, Hey, I'm sorry. Like I, I, you know, I wasn't with anybody when we talked, but like I was, I wasn't over my ex. I was trying to pretend like I was over my ex, but I really wasn't. Or like, you know, my ex was doing this to me. I'm sorry. I didn't tell you about it before. You know, they're, they're deciding though, that they want to choose love over fear. And they want to take a risk, even though, you know, they were just betrayed and heartbroken. This person's very gentle and sensitive. So I feel like this is someone that's been hurt a lot. So, you know, even if you feel like you can't allow this into your life, please at least be gentle with this person because it's really going to take a lot for them to have this heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you. This is something that they've, they've been thinking about for a while. This is not easy for them. They're really going to bear their soul to you is what I'm getting for this group. Like, that's what they want to do at least. You know, they really want to open up to you. It's For some of them, I take some drinking. So I'm, I'm seeing drinking. Like, some of them want to get drunk with you so that they can, like, some of them drink so that they can be emotional and open. Like some of them feel like they're too closed off otherwise. So like they have a drink to, to, to be honest and remove the filter. So some of you might, might want to, you know, maybe have a night of drinks with this person or something. Could be a soulmate past life connection between you two as well. Yeah. They, they want to apologize. They want to apologize. This could be a potential life partner too. If this person gets mental health, let me say that this is a potential life partner. If this person gets mental health, you know, We've got home, belonging, safe space. Yeah, there's a very strong psychic dreams, visions, telepathy. There's a very strong psychic connection here too. You know, this person feels like at home with you. This person feels like you're like you're their safe space. This is someone that like doesn't, because I get like the loner artist type is kind of the energy I feel here. So like this is not someone that connects with most people. This is someone that's more guarded that like only lets a few people in and, you know, it's kind of careful with their heart. It's like they don't, it's like an introverted energy. Like they're, they don't connect with society. They don't connect with most people. They're kind of like more of a loner. This could, per, this person could be like gothic or alternative. Like they have like a, a untraditional way of dressing for some, um, for some of you, but you, but yeah, they feel at home with you. They feel safe with you. They want to open up here, you know, dreams, visions, telepathy. It's like, they want that connection with you. So like I said, please be, be gentle with this person. I'm not trying to justify them ghosting you. Like, it's not okay for anyone to ghost you and hurt you. It's really not. But it wasn't what you thought. There was more. It wasn't just like they didn't care. It was like they were, they were going through a lot mentally. They were in a very dark place when they did that. It's like they almost like lost touch with reality where it's like they, you know, it's like someone just in their room all the time. And then two weeks later, they're like, oh, damn, it's been two weeks or like, 
oh shit, it's been like a, a week since I've showered. I didn't even realize it. Like they're just like, they might've gone on like a drinking binge or something for some of them as well, or like drugs or something like that. You know, I don't know. It's, it, there's different stories here, but, but yeah, please be gentle with this person because it's, I'm, it's taken a lot for them to bear their soul. They're really, they're really thinking about this conversation. It might take a couple drinks to get it out of them, but they're really, um, they're wanting you to know their secrets. They're wanting you to know who they are deep down. They're wanting to, to be vulnerable and open with you. So even if you cannot allow this energy into your life, like even if you feel like you want to move on from this, please just at least hold space for them and be gentle with them and be accepting of them and be, and be careful with your words because this person is very sensitive. So like, don't, I feel like if they reveal this mental illness, just be really careful what you say about it because some of them might feel rejected very easily. So it's like, just be, even if you don't want it in your life, just still be mindful of how you communicate with them. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't make them feel stupid for sharing that because it's, it, they don't share this with most people. They're choosing you specifically. They feel at home with you specifically. They feel safe with you specifically. That's something that's very rare for them. They don't feel safe and open with most people. You know what I mean? So, like, don't put them in a position where they feel like they're going to close their heart and not ever want to tell anyone about their mental illness again. You know what I mean? Like, at least be gentle and empathetic and accepting of what they tell you and, like, let them know that, you know, that you don't think any less of them. Even if you decide at the end of that conversation that, you know, it's best to go your separate ways, like, let them know that it still touched you, that they opened up to you like that and that, you know, they are a good person. Like, don't don't make them feel like crap. You know what I mean? Like, be really gentle with this person. This person's a very sensitive, artistic soul. So please be gentle here. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, like I said, if you guys want a private reading, I can go more in depth into the specific, you know, circumstances, uh, for you. You know, there's, there's different, there's, it's the same story overall, but I mean, there's, there's specific energies. I can go more in depth into what they want to say, what, what action they want to take towards you, just whatever you want to know. Uh, just send me an email. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. And like I said, that email is right below in the description box below this video. You can just copy and paste it and email me. Um, please donate if you can. My donation links are below. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. You know, please share because some people might need to hear this message. Maybe you have people on Facebook or social media that that just need this message. So, so I appreciate you guys sharing these as well. Thank you for watching.